Hello, everybody. I'm Elisa Teague. I'm senior producer of role-playing games here at Renegade Game Studios, and I am here with Sarah Erickson, and we are going to go through creating your very first, first-level Power Rangers role-playing game character. Hey, Sarah. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for putting this together. I can't wait to make my character. I can't wait to see what you make. Um, so I know we talked a little tiny bit and I said, hey, just start thinking about what kind of character you want to make. Because what I really want to stress in this video is that you can make anything that you want, whether it is a character that has um, an influence from something you may have seen in one of the seasons of the TV show or in a comic book or something that is totally original out of your own mind, you can make it using the rules in the core rule book. So the first thing that I want everybody to do if you're playing along at home and making a character is to turn to page 14 in your book or your PDF. And I want you to go to step one, character concept. And this is where you come up with what kind of character do you want to be? Who are you when you are not a Power Ranger and when you're not morphed and who are you in, like in real life? And then what kind of a character do you want to be when you are morphed? So we start thinking about what your backstory is. So Sarah, what have you come up with? So I was thinking about if I were a Power Ranger, what would my story kind of look like? And how did I get to the point where I am actually a Power Ranger. So I wrote up a little thing and this is what I want to use as my inspiration for making the character today. And I wrote this without any knowledge of how to make a character or anything at all, just in my head, what do I want to do as a Power Ranger? Perfect. So here's my story. So I'm a geology student with big aspirations to study volcanology in Alaska. I'm known for organizing trips out into the wilds to share my love for landscapes and nature with my friends. A few months after a new semester starts, I decide to put together a weekend trip for a small group of friends to my family's remote cabin near the top of a nearby mountain. No electricity, no running water, but a big fireplace and plenty of wood to keep us warm. It's a snowy drive to get up there, but we make it and settle in for the evening with games and puzzles. We're boiling some water for ho hot cocoa and suddenly we hear this thunderous rumbling. We feel the whole cabin shake and we rush outside to discover that there's been an avalanche. Luckily, we're at the top of the mountain where it started, so it didn't hit the cabin, but we do notice a faint glow coming from some uncovered mountainside where the snow had slipped and started the avalanche below. The full moon is out and we had our snowshoes ready to go, so we decided to go check it out. As we get closer, we also hear a faint hum and see what appears to be a cracked open geode with five glowing gems. I'd never seen anything like this before. So we decided to take them back and show my favorite geology professor, Mr. Oliver. Okay. So that's where it so starts. That is awesome. I love this backstory. Um, you basically have a way of like how you're called to the power even, you're, uh, which is perfect um because i'm assuming the five glowing gemstones are you're going to be your your five uh rangers that are are going to be there whether it's the friends that are with you or if you're just one of them um and your other teammates that are on in your group your play group are going to be the other four um but okay so cool so you are a geology student uh so i picked that up um and you're there with a bunch of your friends so you're probably you know popular. Um, so these are things that we can take and look at our origins and our influences to create that side of your character. So when we're looking at step one in character concept, um, the first thing you want to think about is your origin. And what your origin means in Essence 20 is who were you before you became a hero? In Power Rangers, that's before you were called to the power, right? What What is your personality type? Um, who, what kind of a person are you? So when you're doing that, you then flip over to the origins section, um, and that is chapter three. Um, it begins on page 20, 
And it talks about choosing your origin and then it goes into all of your origin choices. Now, these are starting choices with the core rule book. We will be adding a spoiler alert. We will be adding more origin choices to future supplements, um, but you can really make any type of character you want with what's right here in this book. And so we have some choices here. We have athletic, brainy. I mean, that is a, a possibility for your character. Comedic, curious, cynical, kind, oddball, popular, rebellious, tragic. Those are our choices. And I'm thinking either brainy or popular uh, for your so when character. I, so I pick one of these origins and then whatever I pick, that's gonna influence some of the stats that I have, some of the abilities I have. But really right at this point, we're just thinking about this is what I want my character to be and whatever just sounds good, whatever feels right is the most important thing, right? There are, there are different types of players, right? And so some players are going to wanna to do it and cho choose their origin based purely on character concept and role playing and what fits with what they envision their character um, being um, personality wise. Some players are gonna look at all of the different mechanics that those specific origins give you. And from a gameplay side say, hey, I want these specific benefits. Um, and then there are players that are going to cross the two, right? And we can take a look at what each one of those does. Um, but basically, your origin is going to grant your character certain skills. It's going to grant your character what your starting health is. Um, and you are going to have some mechanical advantages over another, depending on what you choose. Um, so between the two that I think goes along with your backstory, um, brainy is going to give you um, a starting health of one, um, but so is popular. So that's about the same. Um, and then brainy increases your, you have a choice of increasing your, increasing your essence score um, for smarts or for speed by one and you get to choose. The difference with popular mm -hmm. is that uh, you'll be increasing your strength or your social because popular will give you a, like a little bit of an edge with your social roles. And um, actually I shouldn't use the word edge because that is an actual game mechanic thing, but it will give you um, an increase for social versus smarts, which would be more along the lines of what you would choose for brainy. Um, other than that, your skills that you get to choose based on those essences, and we're gonna get to that, um, differ slightly. So, so looking at these- difference? Yeah, mechanically, but also feel so, I'm going to do mine based on kind of what the images I have in my head of what this character looks like and who I want to play and who would be comfortable for me to be in that skin while I'm playing. So right. I think I'm going to pick popular this time because that sounds like kind of fun. It's a little bit, I'm not, I've never been a popular person like in school. So I think it'd be kind of fun to role play that and just see how that goes. So let's pick that one. Let's go for it. Okay, so perfect. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, take our character sheet, right? And we're going to turn to the origin um, for popular, and we're going to go down and, and start making notes. Now, there are two ways that people like to do this. We do have every single character in the Power Rangers role-playing game will start with base essence scores. And you can fill those out um, ahead of time or after. I always do it after, and the book is formatted um, in the steps to do it afterwards. But if you wanna see what you have to start with, you can do it now. But for this video, we're gonna save it for after and just make a note of what we're adding, right? And so you always want to fill out your character sheet um, in pencil, or if you're using the fillable PDF, then you can just uh, change it as you go, which is pretty cool. Um, so what we're gonna do is, we know that, uh, first of all, I'll read you the popular entry. So, you were born to be raised up on so a social pedestal by your peers and looked up at by the rest of the masses. You weren't necessarily prom king or prom queen, but your name was assuredly on the ballot. Everyone knows who you are, and the majority of people think you're a pretty okay person. There are benefits to being a cool kid, and hopefully you don't take them for granted. 
And so now we're going to go and, and see what your benefits are. So first of all, you're going to enter in your starting health. So your starting health, you'll find that on your character sheet under health. You're going to want to put a one there because you're starting with one health when you're popular. And we can increase that health through our skill selection, which is coming um, up in just a little bit. And so then you get an essence abilities score increase option. So in essence 20, there are four essences that make up a character. Those are your strength, your speed, your smarts, and your social. They all start with an S. Um, and so <laughs> all of those essence scores that you're coming up with right now will then be used to set your defenses for those four things. And then also it will give you a, a pool of points in which you can spend on skill ranks. And so right now you can increase your strength or your social by one as being a popular person. Um, so, so I get a pick, like I don't, I just decide, I feel like I wanna go more into the social direction. So I just put a point under mm -hmm. essence. So I'll put one, so it'll say 10 plus, and then there's a box and it says essence under it and I'll just put one in there. Well, you would just, you would know, you would actually just put it right there as your, um, your strength score. So right next to, for example, if you chose strength right now, you would put a, you would put a one there, right? Or you could put it in your social. And so what that extra point is going to do for you is it's going to give you an extra skill that's in that column, right? So if you want to have, um, let's say an extra skill rank in might, which is what you use to fight, you know, punch somebody, you might want to put that extra point in strength. But if you're the type of character that is going to talk your way out of things and you know persuade people and whatever, you might want to put that extra point in social because it's going to give you an extra skill rank in social. The, the amount of essence points that you get to use as your spread, your base spread is 12. We usually recommend doing you know like a four, three, three, two, and you can put them anywhere you want. Um, but that's going to be added to whatever you choose right now as your little upgrade. So it's, do you want the extra point to be in strength? Do you want the extra point to be in social? What do you think you're going to want to spend it on? So I want to go more towards the social aspect, but I still don't understand where I'm putting that in my stat block. There's a whole bunch of boxes here. Where do I put that there one? Are. Okay. So right now, um, you'll see at the, on your character sheet, there are boxes that say strength, speed, smarts, and social. And then there's a mm -hmm. little box next to those. And that is where you're going to put this number. It's going to be added to the, the base 12 points that you get in the first place. And you can put those 12 points in now or later. The reason why I like to do it later is because I'll want to see where I want to bump things up after I make all of these character choices. Some people want to just put it in now so they can see what they have to start with, but you get to choose where those 12 points go afterwards. So I know it seems a little confusing to put a number in now and say, oh, I only have one in social. You'll be adding to that later. So you don't have to worry okay, about it. So, mm -hmm. Perfect. So for this step, we're not to the 12 yet. You lost me oh, there. We're, but we're starting right now, the very first thing we're choosing. Yeah. <laughs> we're just putting a one in the little box next to social. Okay. Excellent. What's next? So, so you want to choose social? Yep. Okay, so we're going to put the one in the social, and um, and then we get to then choose from the list of the social-based skills that you get with your origin, which is popular, you get a choice. You're spending this one point right now on a skill rank, and your choice is either uh, performance, persuasion, or streetwise. Now, performance is, let's say somebody asks you to sing a song, or write a story or um, paint a picture, you would be using your performance skill to do that. And then persuasion is, you know, talking somebody into something, it's pretty important, um, or convincing somebody that you are who you say you are, um, or talking away past a guard. Um, and then streetwise is how you handle yourself, um, as you're going about your daily business or trying to make contacts with people, uh, trying to find out information from people you know, on the street. 
Um, so where would you want to put that skill rank? I think streetwise would be very helpful. So I would like to put it in that one. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we are going to immediately fill out the D2 bubble on Streetwise. So what that does for you is any single time your game master calls for you to make a Streetwise skill test, you are now going to roll your D20 plus a D2 to make that test. Now that hmm. might go up if we invest more skill ranks, but right now you get to make the, that roll. So you'll be adding your D2 roll to your D20 roll. And the reason why that D2 is so important is it makes you skilled in Streetwise. Normally in play, if you have nothing filled out, you can still make that roll, but you're making it at a snag. And a snag means that you are rolling two D20s and taking the lesser roll. So even having that little bump of either one or two points to add to your D20 is actually giving you even more of a roll because you get to um, make your D20 and not take a lower value. So that's, that's, that's a very important. big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Okay, great. So now I'm a popular student with, uh, or a popular person with some Not a student wise. yet. We're, we're going to get Not to a that. Not yet, yet. Yes. Not yet. Not yet. But yes. although it, your backstory greatly informs that we might lean towards students for later. So, <laughs> so you're popular and now we're going to choose your, your we're going to fill out your ground movement. So your origin choice also tells you how fast you can go while moving on the ground, right? And so your base ground movement is 30 feet. So on your character sheet, you will see um, a space for movement. It's actually right above where your health is. And you wanna just write 30 right there. And I'm doing this along with you. Um, and so we fill that out and then you get some languages that you know. Now, mm -hmm. as a popular person, um, it says, um, okay, languages. It looked good to have at least one additional language on your transcripts and your resumes. So you learned new languages. You are fluent in your native language and you are also fluent in one additional language for each of three points of social that you possess. So right now, you, what is your native language that you, your character speaks? We'll go with English, make it easy. Okay. Perfect, so you get English, and so we'll write that down. And then we know that you're gonna get one language for every three social that you have. Right now, how many social do you have? Just one. That's right. So right now you just know English, but you know that when you spend those last essence points, um, if you pump pump your, your social to be higher for every three social, you'll get another language choice. Um, nice. So, and that shows how many languages you've learned um, before being called to the power. And then you get, <clears throat> you get an origin benefit. So every origin gives you a different benefit. And this is the one for popular. It's, are you who I think you are? <laughs> and the description is, you've learned possibly just accidentally how to use your popularity as a method to get the results you're looking for in social circles. Whenever you're in a position to be recognized as a local social celebrity, you can always consider yourself as having an applicable specialization in deception, persuasion, or streetwise. Now, mm. you took streetwise, which is really cool. So maybe you're just known as like the geology nerd, you know, at school, like on the street, like you're just known as that. And so, uh, I don't know, is there an underground geology? <laughs> <laughs> of the geology <laughs> thing like maybe maybe there's a like crystal uh collectors guild or something at your school or uh, right. I don't know how old you are but you did say you're a student so I don't know if you're a student in what grade um you can be any age you want to be in this game and um, you could be a college student or uh, maybe you are graduated and you're not a student anymore but you were a student um, but you did say you take, you take these crystals to your teacher. So I'm assuming you are still mm -hmm. in school somewhere. So what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I think undergraduate, cause I'm studying geology. So that'd be more like college university so college. coursework. Cool. Mm -hmm. So maybe, yeah, maybe on college campus, you know, there's, there's a crystal collecting club or something like that. And your specializations, um, 
under Streetwise or whatever is that you know, you know, you have this knowledge, right? And so you could put it there. I don't know how applicable that will be in game, but you never know. And it could always come up. And one thing I will say about the Essence 20 system that I really love is that there is a lot of room for negotiation and um, and role playing in your mechanics with your GM. So when G your GM is presenting uh, an obstacle for you to get past, you can always say, oh, I actually know quite a bit about geology. I know quite a bit about this. In fact, on the street, I'm like the most popular person that knows about crystals and rocks and, and anything else. And so wouldn't I know what kind of stone this building is made out of? Wouldn't I know, uh, you know, the area, like the, the geography of this area and like what kind of rocks are here or if I can climb this mountain without falling? You know, and you can always use the those reasonings in your backstory to negotiate with the GM about what kind of a role you can make. And maybe Very you can cool. roll that streetwise specialized. Um, and we'll get to what specialization is in a, in a moment as well um, to see how that benefits you. Okay, so that's your origin. You've, you've chosen your origin. So we are now past step two. And so we can so go on. Mm -hmm. With that origin benefit, there's nothing to write down. There's nothing I need to record. That's sort of just a reminder that I should think about that during the story. You should write your origin benefit and what it does in, in your no own notes. But there is a section on the second page of your character sheet where um, you can write down your benefits. And it is, you can put it here in, in this top box. I have like a mini character sheet, but I know that we're going to be showing this or you can put it down in your notes section, which is at the bottom portion of your character sheet. I usually like to write out full notes when I'm role playing anyway. So I have like a full guide of what my character can do and not just shorthand notes, but you can always refer in your book to the popular section if you need a reminder of uh, the, who are you who you think I am? Or are you who I think you are? Um, benefit, you can always refer back to that in the book. Okay, cool. Or you can just write it out I, yourself. Yeah, great. So I made a little note of that so I can remember. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so now is the next step, which is step three, choosing a role. So the role section is in chapter four in the book, and that starts on page 28. I should have my glasses on, but I don't. Um, <laughs> on page 28. And this is where you choose um, what role you're going to be. And roles are associated with the Ranger spectrum in the Power Rangers role playing game. So um, what color Ranger do you want to be? When you're picturing after you've been called to the power, what color Ranger are you? Now, there are some basic guidelines here, but I want to stress that through the distribution of those 12 essence points that you're getting, you can really build out any type of ranger that you wanna be. So while we give suggestions on how the ranger spectrum leans as far as the mechanical benefits, you can always pump up one essence over another using all of those free essence points that you get. So you can kind of create whatever you want. Um, okay. Now you have six choices. You have black, Blue, green, pink, red, or yellow ranger? So I really like kind of the idea of a skilled warrior with charm and personality helping build bonds between team members. I think that would be a really fun way to play this character that I have in my mind. So I'm going to go with the black energy color. Okay, so your black ranger is going to give you some of these essence score adjustments as well right? And so the first thing that you're going to do is add those in on your character sheet. So Black Ranger is going to give you a plus two to social and a plus one to strength, right? And so your social now just became a three and your strength so, became a one. So do I put that in the box where I previously had a one? Do I just change that to a three or do I put it where it says essence? You put you change it to three. Okay. I'm going to tell you what that little calculation does at the end. Once we're done okay. with all of our essence <laughs> distribution, 
we're going to do that calculation. And that's how you're going to figure out uh, what your defense scores are. And we'll talk a little bit about what that does. Perfect. So, you okay, change your so I now have three mm -hmm. social. Perfect. Right. Um, so and yeah, one strength. Well, so you'll see in, in, in the book that each ranger spectrum uh, role gives you a full description of the basics of what that role does. Um, but as far as filling out your character sheet, we start with adding those um, essence increases. And now those essence increases are going to allow us to then invest those extra points in skill ranks again, right? Um, so what we're gonna do is um, one second. Uh, okay, so we have that. And then your starting skill ranks that you get um, for being a Black Ranger is for your, that strength point, you get a might skill rank. So under strength in that column, you'll see might. It's down at the very bottom. You're going to fill in the little bubble that says D2 for your social that you get for those extra two, you get two in performance. And that's listed under training in the in each role. So no matter what okay. role you, you choose, it's telling you where you're putting those ranks. Right? Okay. Again, you get the free that. ones, when you get your 12 free ones to spend, you can spend them wherever you want. But this is specifically for this. So now we want to put in your skill ranks for the performance. Now you're getting two. So what you do is you fill in that first bubble under performance for D2. And then you fill in the second bubble to D4. Nice. That so is, that means I'm going to roll a D2 and a D4, or do I just roll a D4 in addition to my D20? Okay. So when you, when you need to make a performance check, your game master will say, okay, make a performance skill test, and you will be rolling your D20 plus a D4. Now. Excellent. Since you brought it up, we'll talk a little bit about specializations because we're going to start investing in, in what we want to invest in pretty soon. And so what you can do is when you have extra essence points to spend in skill ranks, you can move up by a die or you can also fill in that one of those little bubbles that are on the lines underneath each skill and choose a specialization. And what you do is when you choose a specialization instead of increasing a die, you can choose any specialization that you want as long as your GM approves, don't take advantage of it. But let's say your performance is, you know, you're a, a singer. So you can choose singing as your specialization and fill in that bubble. And so anytime your game master calls for a skill test that involves singing, you're specialized. So then you would be rolling a D4 and a D2 plus your D20 and you choose from those two extra roles what to add to the D20. Hmm. Some people might say, oh, well, the D2 is not gonna add very much, but let's say you roll a one on your D4 and a two on your D2, you actually get to use that to add to your D20. Um, and then when you increase those ranks even higher, you have even more dice to choose from when you're specialized. Um, so that's pretty handy. So that sounds really wonderful. How do I get a specialization again? <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get to that. You can get okay. a specialization once we have when we're done with all of our character background choices, which is our origin, our role, and our influence. Then you're gonna get twelve extra essence points to spend wherever you want, and then you get to use those to choose either more skill ranks in dice or specializations. And so oh, that's you okay. know that's a step that's coming really soon. Um, Perfect. Okay. So under your spectrum role features for, for the Black Ranger, you also get two personal power regeneration per day. So on your sheet, you're going to see right next to, right to the left of movement above your health, it will say personal power. And that's going to start at two. At level one, you start at two. And as you level up, that will go up. And so your personal power um, is used to spend on powers that you're going to get um, and how many of those you, you can use. And then they regenerate when you sleep. So each day you'll get those back after you've slept. Um, but 
you only get two to start at level one. So you want to put a two right there in that little box. Um, and it is, this walks you through in order how to do all of that. And then you are going to get your grid equipment. And so your Black Ranger choice uh, gives you your starting equipment. And so you are going to get a risk communicator, pretty important. Um, you are going to get your power morpher, which basically when it's time, when it's morphing time, you use that to morph. Um, and nice. from that comes your, your armor and everything else uh, when you're morphed. And then you get a blade blaster, which is your first weapon. And so what we wanna do is to, on the weapon section, uh, on your character sheet, you want to write under weapon, blade blaster. Okay. Uh, your blade blaster has two different, and every Power Ranger is going to start with a, a blade blaster. Um, so your blade blaster gives you two attacks right off the bat. It gives you uh, a might attack, which is when it's in blade form. Um, and so whatever your might ends up being at the end of all of this, we're gonna add that into this section to show what you roll when you use it as a blade. And then as a blaster, it's a ranged attack. And so whatever your targeting ends up being after we've chosen all of your skills, we're gonna calculate that. So I like to write blade blaster on two different lines so that you can see them really easily. Uh, with the difference if you're gonna make it a might attack or a targeting attack, you can keep it on one line and add it in your notes. Um, but that's, that's really up to the player. I like to see it um, kind of spelled out so I can see all what all of my different choices are. And so, so I have Blade Blaster written on two different lines. That sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so what next? There's a whole bunch of other stuff next to each one of those lines <laughs> under the weapon when section. When we're, done, when we're done choosing all of our skills ranks um, after we've assigned all of those essence points, you might wanna put more ranks into targeting or might. And so when we're done with all of that, we're gonna then calculate how, how those skills affect your attacks, right? So, okay. so, so we're gonna put the Blade Blaster down right now so you know you have it, and then we're gonna do that calculation. Perfect, okay, so I don't need to write anything anywhere else yet, just Not yet, that I have but it. But we're gonna get okay. to it. We're definitely gonna okay. get to it. And then, <laughs> Um, you want to write down that you get a versatile power weapon. So because you're building any character you want, you're not just, you know, necessarily the Black Ranger from, you know, season one of the show, you get to choose your own power weapon. And a versatile power weapon means that it's a weapon that you can use with one or two hands. And there is a weapons chart in the book, um, in the equipment section. And you can choose whatever one you want. I don't know if you have one that you have in mind. And it's not necessarily something that you need to do right off the bat. Um, but as we're going through this character creation, if we want to show how to fill this out, uh, we can choose one uh, and choose one for you. It doesn't mean that, you know, you might, this might be something you want to discuss with your game master or go through like every, all of your choices on the chart. But a good one to start off with, I would think is maybe a power sword. It's pretty cool. A power sword you can use with one or two hands. And the cool thing about the versatile weapons, which is one or two hands is if you are holding something else in, you, in one hand and you're swinging with, with uh, just one hand with your sword, it does a certain amount of damage. It does like the power sword, for example, if you look at the chart, it will do one sharp damage. But if you're swinging with two hands, it's gonna deal two sharp damage if you, you know, put your full force in it. And so the Black Ranger has that ability to use weapons with one or two hands right off the bat like that. So oh, cool. um, I like the power sword because it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so then, then, like a choice. I don't know if you have something else that in mind, well, so if I pick the power sword, then do I replace the versatile power weapon underneath my weapon section? Do I just write power sword there instead? Yeah, you, you okay, get the perfect. choice. When it, yeah. says, when it says versatile power weapon, you get to choose whatever power weapon you want. It's just telling you that's oh, okay. what you get to choose. You're customizing your character for you. It can be whatever you want. And if it's something that you envision that's not spelled out in the weapons chart, there are a lot of different types of, of 
um, weapons that you can choose from. And I mean, this chart is a few pages long, so you can look through all of the different stuff and see what might fit what you're, you know, what you envision in your own head. And that's something you can always talk through with your game master and say, I really like want this type of weapon. Like I want something that is, you know, more like a mace or more, you know, like a specific type of ranged weapon. And you can talk to them and figure out what is closest on this chart. Uh, we will be putting iconic weapons from all different types of Power Rangers teams in future books that are coming out. I don't want to spoil too much in this video, but we have a lot of really cool stuff coming that will give you more pre-built choices, but that doesn't mean you can't build your own using this as a template right now. So what do you cool. think about the Power Sword? Do you like that? I like the Power Sword. That sounds good, yeah. Okay, cool. So then we write power sword on that third line. So now we know you have your blade blaster and we have the power sword. Okay, um, and then your this whole roll section for the Black Ranger is going to tell you all of the different things that you can do to customize your Ranger as you level up. So this is a good reference for once you level it's going to tell you all of the different things that you're going to get at each different uh, milestone level. Um, and when your game master tells you that you've accomplished enough to put you to level two, you'll then go right back to this chart and look at level two and you'll be able to add in all of the things that it says you can add in onto this character sheet. But right now we're just building level one. So we don't wanna to get too ahead of ourselves. Um, and then of course, once you get to level three, you'll get access to your Zord and your choice of Black Ranger is going to influence what kind of Zord you can build as well, which is really cool. Um, but for right now, because we are um, just doing level one character, we can talk about the level one stuff that you have. So every Ranger will get an It's Morphin Time benefit. So when you are morphed, you are gonna get certain things. So your toughness, um, your toughness bonus is going to add on to whatever your your defense is for your strength and that's going to depend on <clears throat> your armor um, and so your toughness is going to go up um, by one so right now on your character sheet you are going to add under strength do you see where it says armor in that little calculation Mm -hmm. So it says 10 yeah. plus, this is essence plus perks plus armor. So we want to put a one right there. Okay. And we put a one there because yeah. we have this oh, strength you know what? increase. Actually, you're, it's not because of your strength increase. It's because of your armor training. Actually, you get light and medium armor training. So you can actually choose medium armor, which I would, and choose that too and put a two there instead. Black Rangers get light or medium armor training. So I would- So, so that's under, under in the book, it says training has armor, light or medium, and light's one, medium is two, and I assume heavy is three. Heavy is actually four, and ultra heavy is okay. six. And that's under, that's under its morphing time on, for Black Ranger, it's on page 33. So you can see it says, your toughness bonus is determined by your armor training. Light gives you plus mm. one, medium gives you plus two. So oh, I see. Okay. armor for you and give you a plus two. So we put a awesome. little two in that box. Okay. When you're, when you're morphed, all of your jump distances are tripled, which is super cool. So you can do all of those cool jumps. Um, as a free action, you can always summon your power weapon directly to your hand. Ooh. There are no pockets in, there are no pockets in these suits. <laughs> <laughs> so anytime you want that power sword, it just appears in your hand and you have it. Um, I need a, that a, I need that in real life. I never have right? pockets. That sounds amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, so and that's that's a free action. And in a future video, we're going to talk about how actions work. Um, but uh, you will always have that free action, at least one free action to use to summon your your weapon for your attacks. And then. So these things like the jump distance and the free actions, do I write those down on my character sheet somewhere? 
You can, but it's always in that it's morphin time section right there in, in the books. So it's easy to reference. You can write it down again under the notes section or under your perks section on your character sheet. Um, the, you will be okay. choosing a lot of other perks too. So it just depends on on how neat your writing is and how much you want to fill in there. If you feel like you really need it as a reference right there on your character sheet, you don't have access to your book or your PDF all the time, you can you can make that note down there, either in perks or um, in the notes section. Again, okay. for all my games that I play, I always keep a separate notebook full of notes of everything that happens every second of, of the adventure. Like we meet this person and I'll write it down. And so usually in the front, I will have um, all of that stuff written down just so I have it as an easy reference, but it's also right here in the book. Okay, perfect. Um, and then um, at, at, as a Black Ranger in its morphin time, you um, can choose to avoid being defeated um, when you're reduced to zero health. And again, we're, we're gonna talk about combat in an, even another video. We're gonna do a whole series here. Um, and you can avoid defeat by automatically returning to your natural form, unmorphed. And then you're just gonna be at one health. So nice. if you're in combat and you know a monster takes you out down to zero health and you would be defeated, you can instead return like demorph and you're now in your normal form, human form, uh, or maybe not human. Uh, I'm assuming you're <laughs> from earth, but you can be from wherever you wanna be, uh, but you are Good. demorphed and at one health. Um, and so that's cool. how being morphed works. Um, and then for the Black Ranger, you are the part of the team, right? And at uh, first level, you basically are super positive. You can boost your teammates. You get a special benefit being the heart of the team. Um, and as a popular kid, this is perfect for you as well. Um, as a free action, you can apply a shift up, one shift up to any role of any ally within 60 feet of you. Um, nice. That is part of your your quips and speeches, which is, is one of your powers, right? So you can spend your, your point and you can basically motivate anybody who's rolling their dice and they actually get to roll one die type higher because of you, because you're such a great motivator. Um, so that's a really cool thing about being part of a team as a Black Ranger. Um, so it mentions quips and speeches. So I didn't have that written in my sheet yet. So is that something I should be adding in there? You can put it on, okay. you can put quips and speeches on your character sheet under your power section. Powers, perfect. Okay, cool. I'll put it in there. And so that's basically, that's how it works though. Your quips and speeches basically gives you, you say a motivating speech and you give the upshift to any ally that is within 60 feet of you. And so I have you get two points up. in that. So I should put a have, two next to it. Well, you have, you have the ability to spend it twice if you want to, but later you might get other things you can do that you might want to spend that on. It's just one of the things you can do with those points. Perfect. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the roles. Now we're done with that step. So we want to then move on to step four, which is choosing your influences. Now influences work a lot like origins and roles as far as the choosing one. But the difference is, is that you can choose more than one. So we can keep that in mind. There are small penalties that we call hangups to choosing more than one influence. Um, but your influences are basically things that have happened to you throughout your life that change your character for who they are, right? And so we have a list of influences to choose from and influences start, it's chapter five. It starts on page 64 of the book. And um, you know, it will the intro to that will talk about a little bit how influences work in general. Um, but your influences basically give you certain benefits. They give you background bonds to, to select from, or you can make up your own, but it will give you a guideline in case you don't really know how you want your character to be. You have a pretty clear picture of who you want your character to be. 
to be. So maybe you would make up your own background bond, something that your character, you know, lives by on a daily basis and it's really important to them. We always give a chart that you can either roll on randomly or just choose from if you want to, that kind of gives your character direction um, in the influences. And then of course, if you choose more than one, what your hangup choices are. So here are the influence selection choices. We have artisan, a caretaker, a community helper, small town roots, martial artist, nomad, not from around here, and student, and survivor, and teacher. Now, we already know that you are a geology student based on your background that you came up with. So I think student is a really good choice for you here. You, you can choose that one or any of the other ones, but I would say the one that matches the best right now is probably student by what you told me. What do you think? Yeah, student sounds great. I think survivalist might be kind of fun because we're in the mountains, but I think student's probably the right choice here because we're going to go back to campus now that we've had our little weekend adventure. So yeah, I think and it's not really survivalist. Nice it's not survivalist. It's survivor, which means you've been through a hardship in your life, whatever it is, um, that you, and you are survivor of whatever that that is. Um, that doesn't mean that you haven't done that as well. And you can always choose it, but we can start with student and go from there and see how you feel if you want to choose another one in addition. Does that sound good? Perfect. Yeah, let's do student. Okay, so um, you're, you're a student, you devote your life to study in ways beyond just having a natural general intelligence. We already know that you're a student of geology, which is perfect. Um, and so you get with your influence an influence perk. So, first of all, you want to now fill in. Um, where it says influence on the top of your character sheet, you want to write student. And then um, you get an influence perk. So when you turn to page two of your character sheet um, in that perks box at the top, you're now adding another perk. And so your influence perk is going to, um, let me read the entry for student for you. I'm going to try and face the, the microphone a little bit more. Your expertise Perfect. in your study of choice gives you superior knowledge in one subject, allowing you to speak eloquently and thoroughly on the topic. You may choose from the list of provided um, or decide on your own choice with your GM's approval. So we already kind of know that geology, let's see if geology is even in there, but we know that you are a student of geology. So we're probably going to go with nice. that no matter what. Uh, when oh, it's on there. I can pick it. Yay. On there? See? Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey. Um, psychic. Um, okay. So uh, when attempting to recall facts or performing a task in relation to this subject, you gain an edge on your skill check. So we talked about a snag earlier where if you're unskilled in something, you have to roll the two D20s and take the lesser value. When you have an edge, it's the opposite of a snag. You get to actually roll two d20s and take the higher number. So with anything involving geology, you are automatically going to have an edge on that and be able to uh, take the higher value when you're rolling anything that has to do with geology. Um, and use that to your advantage when you're playing. When, Like I was saying before, anything that has to do with anything related to geology, remind your GM, oh, hey, I have an edge in geology. I should be able to to roll an edge with this. Um, nice. And then additionally, you are recognized within the learning institutions related to your study and welcomed readily with assistance in your further research. That one's great for role playing. So you already know that you have a teacher that you have in mind that is probably one of your mentors um, and you can use that as a contact point. So maybe in an adventure, you find something weird. You can always bring up, oh, <laughs> I'm going to go to Mr. What was his name? Oliver, of course. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Oliver. I'm going to go to Mr. Oliver and he will give you that information because you're welcomed readily with assistance in your further research. And that is, is your influence perk. So you will always have that connection at school to go and get some more information, which is super valuable. Um, so I would put under perks, I'd put edge geology something like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Edge on okay. geology field tests, uh, just to remind yourself um, that you have this. Um, again, sure. you can write out 
you know, even more complete notes, however you uh, like them. Uh, again, I always keep like a little journal when I'm playing any, any role playing game because I like lots of notes uh, to remind myself of all the things that I can do. Um, and so, you know, your field is geology, you've done that. And then you can choose your background bond. Um, and so you'll see um, a table that for students, it's on page 73. And you can see the different background bonds there. This is a guide for role playing. This is not a mechanical thing necessarily. This is how, if you need a little bit of extra help teaching you or guiding you on how to play your character, you can roll on this table randomly. You can choose one that stands out to you or you can make up your own. And, and it's really great to have these background bonds because it shows you how to move forward with your character in any situation. Like, you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you're like, hmm, how would my character act in this situation? Oh yeah, I have this background bond. So for example, if you rolled on it and, or, or chose, let's say number five, I'm just choosing this random, randomly. I sometimes look down on others whom I feel aren't as smart as me. <laughs> oh no. So, I mean, look, that, that's a personality quirk, right? So sometimes in, when you're role playing, you know, and you come across people, and maybe that's how you will play your character. You're maybe you're a little snooty when it comes to geology. Like, oh, didn't you know that that's quartz and not, you know, graphite? I don't know if that's a thing. I'm not a geologist, um, but you know what I mean. Like, like maybe that's just how you play your character, and that's what gives you that like little quirky way of of role playing. Um, so, how do you feel about adding another influence? You don't have to. Um, most people probably won't, but if you want extra perks like the ones we just gave you, you can choose an additional influence if you want to. But again, it comes with a hangup. And so each one of these will give you a hangup. If you choose an extra benefit, you're going to get something that happens to you in certain situations as well. I think that this fits your character pretty well, but that's always something you can add afterwards as well and by talking to your GM if you if you want to add another influence what do you think um yeah I think we should add one because I think it'd be interesting to see how that works so all right we if can we add added uh, yeah so looking through we have artisan and it can be any type of artisan whether you are a, a painter a creative person a baker a anything you want to be a dancer um, a sculptor photographer I don't know if that fits with your character. It, nothing in there really in your background story that you read to me made me think artisan, but maybe there's something hidden in there. Um, a caretaker, maybe you live with your grandparent and you've taken care of them or a little, a younger sibling, or maybe you're an au pair or a nanny on the side uh, <laughs> to, keep, to, to help you through your college bills um, or a community helper. Maybe you're, you know, volunteer firefighter or um, a, another type of community helper. We have small town roots, which means that you are from a smaller town um, and everything that comes from that, maybe you're a farmer or um, from a rural area or just from a tiny town where maybe when you were growing up and you were younger, you weren't as popular. And maybe that's what spurned that popularity once you got into college or that, that desire for popularity, right? Let's um, do that one. I think that kind of fits with the geology. Like I spent a lot of time in a small town looking at rocks. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so nice. we're gonna go through the same thing that we just did with students. So small town roots, uh, I'm not gonna read the whole paragraph out, but basically you come from a simple life in a small town or a remote area that people rarely leave. And so that's gonna be an influence to your role playing as well. Your influence perk that comes with this, so we're going to write this down under perks also as, as a note of what you get, is your wisdom guides you and your hard work pays off. Once per session, when making a choice, you may ask your GM which option is better for you. Mm. The GM must answer truthfully with, uh, as to which of the two is most beneficial to you, if that's possible for them to do, right? So you I might like say, that. Hmm, I have this wisdom, like, what, what is my gut telling me to do? And the GM needs to tell you what is most beneficial. They don't have to give you details as to why, right? So you can't use it too much to, to um, th that advantage, but they can say, you have a gut feeling, your wisdom tells you, your experience tells you, 
it's better to go right than left, right? Or it's, it's best to trust this person or not trust this person. You have that. Um, so that's your- I like answer. that one. But now you Ooh. get a hang up, right? Because you can't just stack perks all day long. Um, and by the way, you're, you can only do this three times um, as far as however many influences you choose. So you can't take them all. Um, so your hang up that comes with small town roots is this. Sometimes your simple experiences show with lacking eloquence or understanding of the greater world around you. When you meet someone new with whom you don't share an influence, right? So they're not a student and they're not from a small town you suffer a snag on your first social skill test with them. Now, you're popular now, so you kind of have that boost in some of your, your social stuff. Um, so this might balance out a little bit, but when you're meeting somebody brand new, you're gonna roll that snag, which again is you're rolling two D20s and taking the lower value. The lucky part for you is you have, you're gonna have higher skills in social, so higher die rolls to add to that lower D20. So it will probably balance out pretty well for you. So that, that works. So you wanna write nice. that down in mm -hmm. your notes that you have that hang up. So first social skill test with a stranger, suffer a snack. Um, and then you get another background bond. So there's another table on this page that you can either roll randomly from or choose one that sticks out at you or make up your own um, that, will help with that role playing again. So should we pick another random one? You can pick uh, yeah, one. let's pick a random one. That sounds you, good. You pick this time, because I, I kind of was giving the last one as an example and then got stuck with it. <laughs> okay, let's try 11. Use a number one through 12 or roll a die if you have one handy. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go with 11. That was my random roll. <laughs> 11, okay. So this is your small town roots bond. I truly believe that the early bird gets the worm. So that means you're gonna be like the early riser if you're the one that rallies the team in the morning. They're like, come on guys, let's get up and do stuff. You know, and that will add to, you know, how you're gonna role play your character. So you are a uh, geology student who's super popular from a small town <laughs> who is a motivator, which actually this goes well, so in the morning, mm -hmm. you're especially motivating. You're like the that annoying person right. whenever you need in the morning when everybody's yep. tired and hasn't had their coffee yet. Yep, that sounds right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I could easily role play that one. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, so you can, again, you can write down that bond on, on your character sheet or in your notes or wherever you are most likely to remember it if you're, you know, need to reference it. Um, and that is, again, not a mechanical thing, but it is definitely cool to use in your role playing. Um, all right, so now we've made all of our character choices um, and written all of those things down. So now we get to assign those 12 um, essence points to your scores, right? And so um, we, we know we have one in strength right now, three in social, we have 12 more to assign. For, for an average character, we like to suggest to break those down into four, three, three, and two, putting the four in any essence you want, the two threes in any of the other two essences you want, and the two in another. You don't have to do it that way, um, but as a level one character, in order to make sure that you are pretty well-rounded, that's the breakdown we like to suggest. And that's, that's listed in the book as your suggestion. Doesn't mean you have to hold to it. You already have three in social. You know you're a very social person, so you can pump that up higher. Or you might want to just put the two in social to add to the three, and you would end up with five. But you can distribute it however you want. So, so these numbers are going in those boxes next to strength, not below them. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's do three in strength, so I'll have four, He's three four so four. far. Um, we'll do three in speed. Perfect. Um, oh, no, 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 we'll just do two in speed. I don't wanna use up all my points. Okay, so we've used five so far. This is hard. <laughs> Let's do 
I did so, a three, a two, I think a four in smarts is right. Okay. And then we'll add three to social. So that'll be a total of six. That's a very high social score. Now, two in speed is fine, but um, in the speed rules, uh, depending on what your speed is, first of all, speed is gonna affect two major considerations. So I want you to think about this. Two in speed is totally fine to have, especially as a level one character. And you're going to level up anyway, um, pretty soon after a few basic missions, but your speed affects two things. First of all, it's going to uh, affect your evasion, which is your defense for speed. So if somebody is shooting a laser beam at you, um, you're going to be dodging that, right? And your evasion is going to be whatever your speed is plus 10. And you'll see that little calculation that's right below it. We're gonna do those calculations in a second, um, which means if a threat is shooting that laser beam at you, the game master is gonna roll an attack, same way that you will, right? They'll roll their D20 plus whatever um, skill they have for that attack. Usually that's targeting, whatever die rank they have for targeting. And whatever that total is, if it beats your, in this case, 12, it's going to hit you. So having a higher speed is pretty cool for being able to evade those attacks. The second thing that speed affects is how many actions you can take in your turn. And again, we're gonna to get to this in another video and explain this you know, a little bit more in detail, but it is all in the combat section of the book. But your, if you have a speed of two, it means that you're gonna be able to take your move action and standard action. So you'll be able to move and attack somebody, for example. But if you have a third one, you'll be able to take even another action. So two is fine, but I just want you to consider that before you make your final choice. Okay, so let's modify strength down to three and speed up to three. So you really want so, that social that high. It's okay. Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> Well, we're making the character the way I'm I'm thinking about it. I, I want understand you, to do that. you might want to make your character based more on how you want to play the game. And I'm not really doing that. I'm doing it more like this is the vision I have in my head. Well, so. then maybe you should just leave your speed at, at the two then. Or oh no, we said three, right? So you have your three, three. So I'm at oh, no, three for two. strength, three for speed, and four for smarts, and six for social. Okay, so the three plus your, your, your strength point that you had from your character creation gives you a four total in strength. No, no, okay. I'm sorry, I have three total. So I added only two to my strength. Oh, that's right, three, okay. So your two that you put in strength just now adds to the one strength from the beginning. So you have a three total in strength. Then you have your three for speed, your four for smarts and six total for social. So we're gonna now do the rest of the calculations and then basically your character creation is complete. So nice. your toughness that you see in the little box that says right below strength is going to be whatever your um, strength is plus 10, right? Okay. So your toughness is right now a 13 which means if somebody comes up to you and punches you, like a putty comes up and you know throw, throws a right hook, you are defending with that toughness. So again, when the GM rolls for that attack, if they roll higher than a 13, it hits. Um, and so then we have that little calculation that's at the bottom. So if you have the 10 plus your essence score, which is at three, so we want to put that three mm -hmm. in that little box right there. We don't have any perks right now that add to your strength, but you might pick some of those up later. So, but right now that's blank. Plus we have your two for your armor, right? Which is going to give you a total of 15. And so when you're morphed and in your power suit, that toughness level goes up to 15. So now nice. Putty's throwing a punch at you when you are in your power suit and you're morphed. That GM is going to have to roll higher than a 15 to hit you. So nice. in your not morphed, 13, morphed, 15. And that's how you do that little calculation. So now we have two strength essence points that we have not invested in skill ranks, 
We already had to invest that first one in might based on your character selections. But now we have two more. We just put two more in there. So we can invest those anywhere we want. We can invest them in athletics, which is basically throwing things or anything that um, has to do with your physical strength in movement. We can invest it in brawn, which is how strong you are as far as like lifting stuff, pushing, shoving things. Um, conditioning, which is pretty important. When you invest in conditioning, it adds to your health. I highly recommend doing that, um, especially at level one. Intimidation, this is strength intimidation, how, um, how you present yourself with your strength to intimidate others. And might we already know is for your physical attacks, your melee attacks, anything that has to do with your power sword uh, uses might as an attack um, and any hand-to-hand -hand combat that you use as a might attack like punching somebody is also used as a might attack. So you have two to spend. I would spend at least one in conditioning to bring your health up to at least a two. Honestly, I as level one, I would probably put both of those in conditioning for right now. Um, you do use your power sword as your main weapon and might is kind of important for that, but this is where those choices come into play. And of course they will be added to later. So quick question on that. So you said that I had already spent one in might and I had two left. Is that because I have a total strength of three? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's where that number was. Um, I am totally fine with doing two in conditioning. I don't really want to just die. So that sounds wonderful. Well, you're not going <laughs> to die. The, the nice thing that's about true. Essence 20 is you, you, you don't die. You are defeated, which means you're taking out of combat. And then you have to figure out another way to resolve whatever the problem is. Um, so mm. you, you definitely don't want to be defeated right away. So I highly recommend doing that. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to fill in the little bubble for conditioning, um, the plus one and the plus two. Conditioning is one of, so now we're going to change your health to three because we just added two points of conditioning. So you start now with three health instead of one, which I think is pretty good. Um, that sounds good. Okay, so now we are gonna to move to speed. You have three essence points in speed. All of these are from your, your chosen essence distribution. So none of them are locked to anything in particular. You can choose where you want to invest these anywhere you want. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. so looking at the top, my total evasion is 13 then. I add my speed yes. to my, oh, yeah. well, that plus 10. Yes, yeah, so, so your evasion is going to be, well, your 10 plus the three, which is essence. Right, you your evasion score, which is your defense for speed, is going to be 13. It's always 10 plus whatever your speed is. And that calculation right below it is for your morph stuff. So right now you don't have any speed perks either, speed-based perks that those will come later um, through different leveling selections. And then um, you have um no other bonuses from any of your powers for speed that are speed related. You have more social stuff. So um, your morph is still going to be 13 right now. So, so your choices for speed for your skills are acrobatics. So if you're climbing up a building, you know, uh, you have to make a really long jump, um, things like that. Um, you have driving which I don't know if you drive a car or not, but driving is important sometimes. Um, oh, whether or not point you get driving. unskilled or not. Um, yes, finesse. Driving. So finesse, there are certain weapons that are finesse weapons instead of might weapons. Your weapon is a might weapon. So you don't have to worry too much about finesse. And when you are fighting with like martial arts type style fighting, you can choose whether you're fighting with finesse or might. Right now you have a point in might. So if you don't choose finesse, anytime you say I'm hitting somebody, you use your might to hit instead of finesse to hit. Just depends on, on what kind of character and how you fight. Um, and then where there's infiltration. Infiltration is like, how sneaky are you? How, <laughs> how, um, how stealthy, right? How well do you, you know, break into places? That's pretty important. Um, if you're doing investigation type missions that you don't want to be seen. 
Init initiative is exactly what you said. So when the game master says, okay, combat is starting, everybody roll your initiative, that will give you a bonus to that roll um, to see how if you go first or not, or how high up on that initi initiative you are. And then the last one, pretty important, is targeting. Now your main weapon is not a targeting weapon. You chose a power sword. So targeting isn't as important for you. You do have that blade blaster in your knock pocket. Um, and so um, is it on a belt? Is it in your pocket? Depends on what your outfit looks like. <laughs> um, but you do have that blade blaster. And so um, if you want to shoot with it, that uses targeting. So you mm -hmm. might want to put one in targeting. Otherwise, whenever you shoot with your blade blaster, if you want to make a ranged attack, it will be at a snack. So up to you. So I'm going to put a point in driving, a point in initiative, and a point in targeting. I think that is a great spread. So you want to fill out the D2 bubble under driving. You want to fill out the D2 bubble under initiative. I guess it is tied to a die. It's just you can't specialize in. I guess that's the difference. Uh, the two you can't specialize yeah. in. It's conditioning and initiative. And then um, the D2 in targeting. Perfect. And now speed is done. So we're going to move on to smarts. So you have your willpower defense works exactly the same way. It's 10 plus four. You just put a 14 in there. Um, so if somebody is using some sort of mind games on you, you are <laughs> going to defend with your willpower. Um, and it works just as if somebody's hitting you, right? And your willpower defense is 14. Um, none of your, so you put the four again in your morph. The morph is going to be the same at level one. And this is pretty much the case with all level one characters. Those go up as you get new perks and powers as you level up. These numbers are going to start changing, especially while you're morphed. Um, but right now, you don't have anything that's affecting your defenses, um, which is fine. But you do have four to spend in smarts. So you have alertness. Alertness is how well you perceive everything around you in general. If you want to specialize, and we're going to talk about that because this is going to be coming up now. Um, if you want to put a specialization in, you know, hearing, like you have excellent hearing, like you can hear anything from really far away, you can specialize in it, um, or uh, perception or specific investigation, you can specialize in those things. You may want to, you may not want to at this point, but as you level up, that's a consideration. Um, and those all have to do with alertness. Um, you have culture which is your basic understanding of what is around you. You can specialize in specific cultures as well later on and put that as a specialization. So let's say you, in your backstory, you did a summer abroad in France and you know everything there is to about French culture. You could put that on there and you never know when that's going to come up. Um, you have science. That's not bad for you as far as that's character good. choice. Um, especially with geology. Now you already have your um, edge on geology. So if you take science and put geology there too, and you specialize, you would be specializing plus your edge from your student benefit. And that's pretty strong. Um, survival, which is how well you do outside of, of the city, how well you do on the, your own. You have to camp out for a night. You have to identify a certain type of plant. You have to identify if something is healthy or not healthy to eat. Um, any of those things fall under survival. And then there's technology, which is anything computerized, uh, mechanics, things like that. So you have four points to spend. What do you think? So with the specializations, I don't actually have any of those yet. That's something that's going to come later, right? You can choose them now if you want to. So you can spend these either in moving your die rank up which is oh, which okay. guy you roll, or you can specialize. Once you specialize, whatever die value you have as your rank, you get to roll that die and everything below it to add to your roll or to choose to add to your D20 roll. So that's where specialization comes in. So if you wanted to pump all four points, let's say, into science, and you put filled in the bubbles D2, D4, and D6, and then you wanted to use that fourth point to specialize in geology, any single time you roll any science uh, roll, 
any science skill test at all, whether it has to do with geology or not, you would be rolling the D2, D4, D6 plus your D20. But if it has to do with geology, you're rolling that D20 plus the D2, D4, D6 and taking that highest value. So okay, that's so let's, special. Let's do a uh, D2 in science, a specialization in geology, um, and then another point in science. So that's three of my points so far. And then my fourth point I'll put into survival. Sounds perfect. So now, for now, and of course this will go up as you level, anytime you make a science skill test, you are rolling a D4 and adding it to your D20. If it has to do with geology, you get to roll that D20 and then choose between your D4 and your D2, which to add. Um, and you can always Excellent. put more skill ranks in science later, and then it just adds to that geology role. Okay, so now, social. We already have one spent in Streetwise um, and two in performance. Those were required from your character build, as you remember. So we have three more to spend. We're, oh wait, I'm jumping ahead again. We need to fill out our, your little defense <laughs> first. So uh, your defense first, I always jump ahead. I always wanna spend on skills. That's the fun part. It's exciting. Um, That's the shopping part. <laughs> it is, yeah, right? Um, so for, first, what we're going to do is we're going to add six to 10. And so your cleverness defense is 16. That's your highest defense. Nobody can out, outwit your social prowess. Um, and so we put that six in the little essence box in the calculation. None of these perks that you had actually added to your defense, if they just added to um, all of your other so social um, encounter stuff. So your morphed social is also going to be 16, which is pretty high for a level one character. So that's pump that up and a I, lot. So now right. we get to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've already spent three points because I have two in performance and one in streetwise. So I only have three left. So I think I'm going to increase animal handling by two and then persuasion by one. So that takes care of all six of those points. That's good. And so basically, aside from deception, you are skilled in every social skill that there is, which is really good. So you won't be rolling a snag. You're just not a good liar. That's all that means, <laughs> which is good. That's actually a good trait to have. Um, but sometimes you do need to deceive people. So we'll see how that works for you. Um, so now we're going to do our check. And this is the coolest thing about how this uh, essence spending works. You can always check with a very rare exception. It's only if you have a special perk that lets you change it. You can always check to make sure your skills are correct and you have the right amount of things chosen. Because in each one of these categories, whatever your essence score is, so in this case, your strength is three, there should be three bubbles filled out in the strength column. Your speed is three, there should be three bubbles filled out in your speed column. Your smarts are four, and there should be four bubbles. One, two, three, and your specialization bubble is filled. That's four in there. And your social is six, and you count those up. You have six filled out there. And you know that you have done this correctly. You've spent Yay. them all. You're not, you didn't leave anything on the table and you didn't assign anything where it wasn't supposed to be. Um, and the only last thing to do is now that you have these scores set and you know what your might and your finesse and your targeting are, you can go to your weapons and fill out what you get to roll when you make those attacks. So we know that with your blade blaster, when you're making that um, attack with the blade, it is a might attack, and your might is a d2. So under attack, you can write plus d2 to remind you that you're rolling a d2 when you're rolling your your, your attack skill test, right? Your attack and skill. is that my, so I have the two things for blade blaster, one of them is ranged and one of them is not? Right, you, so, yes. So if you look on the weapons chart, and this is where you can fill this out on your own, you can fill out what all of your details are. So your blade blaster is going to give you a, a reach attack, which is usually five feet, especially if you're you know, a human being that um, doesn't have anything, any perks or powers that increase your reach. Um, so for you, your reach is gonna be five feet. So anything that you're gonna use with your might to use the blade blaster as a blade is gonna be five feet. And you can put that on one of your lines and that's your might attack. 
And then the other um, line is going to give you your ranged attack. And you can turn to the weapons chart. I believe it's a 3060. Let's see how good my memory is. Uh, <laughs> blade Buster. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Nope, it is a 4075. My, my memory is not good. Um, so, so you can write 40 slash 75. And what that means, again, we'll go over this in combat, the combat video that we're going to do. But um, 40 means that when you're shooting somebody up to 40 feet away, no problem. Um, if you can still shoot somebody up to 75 feet away, but you're going to roll that with snag, anything past 75, mm -hmm. it's not going to reach. Right. And so that's okay. And then so in the attack, they're both plus D2s right now because they're both based on my might, or one is based on something else. There's the ranged one is going to be based on your targeting. And so oh, okay. D2 and targeting. So it also happens to be D2. But it wouldn't necessarily be. It just happens to be for me. It depends okay. on whatever you chose for your, your skill rank in that. So if you didn't put it in anything in targeting, if you left that blank, it would actually be unskilled and you could write unskilled there, which means you roll it as a snag. Um, but you did put something there, so that's perfect. And then your power sword, um, you would fill out um, all of the details there. It is reach as well. So any anybody who's within five feet of you, you can reach with it. And um, your power sword is also might, which is rolled right now at a plus D2. And you can roll the dam. You can write down the damage types for those. You know, the power sword does a sharp damage, one sharp damage with one hand, or two sharp damage with two hands. Um, it actually has an alternate effect as well that you could put in the little alternate effect um, box that says it's an energy attack. Once per encounter, you can do an energy attack instead of a sharp, like you can do energy damage instead of sharp damage. Um, but that's rolled with a downshift and. Those are com more complicated rules that we're going to talk about when we get into combat, but you can write all of that stuff down. You just copy it out of your weapons chart. And Excellent. that's it. And your character um, is good. No, I have more questions. Oh, okay. If you have questions, well, we can answer questions, that's for sure. But those are the basics. <laughs> well, at the very top of my sheet, I have name, pronouns, origin, and role and description. So the origin. Did we do that and I missed your, or, it your origin? Yes. Um, your origin is popular. Popular. Okay. And then the role, the role is, is Black Ranger. Black Ranger. Okay. Awesome. And I then my description, I can, I can make whatever I want, name and pronouns. I can put whatever I want. So mm -hmm. exciting. All right. That all comes from whatever you want to be. Um, and in your description, um, if you want to do it in, in your notes, you can write it up there too. You can have your basic description of what you look like unmorphed. Um, you can also put your morph description of, you know, what, what does your power suit look like? Yeah, we know you have medium armor. What does that mean? Like what kind of design is on your helmet? What, you know, we know you're a black ranger, um, but this is where you can also say if I, you wanted to take the black ranger role um, but your suit happens to have, you know, could be a plaid. You could, your suit could be plaid. It can be whatever color you actually want for your aesthetics. Um, this is where you can put what is there. What kind of, is there an animal representation on your helmet? Like from certain seasons, is there certain badges that you have? Do you have some sort of flair? Um, all of that can be written in your description. Excellent. Oh, that was fun. Yay. Now I have a char character. Now I just have you to have a character. Him. Now we need to play. We're yeah, gonna do a couple now we're... more of these, and then we're going to get everybody together, and we're all going to play together. That's going to be fun. That's going to be great. Oh, I feel so much better about knowing how to fill this sheet out now. Thank you so much, Elisa. That was really helpful. Thank you for doing this with me. And if anybody has any other questions, we're going to be doing a couple more of these. But just make sure to join all of our Facebook groups, the Discord. Uh, we're there to answer any additional questions you have. Um, but hopefully, this walked you through. Um, to get you started on your level one character. And thanks for joining us. Thanks. Bye.